We are in the middle of a series called Revive and Restore. Revive and Restore is very short, our mission statement for our church, but I uh, don't ever want you to see it as a business plan for this church, but this is how we remind ourselves of, of what God has given to us and the things to focus on as a church. And so God's given us a really cool story over the life of our church that we've uh, been blessed with places to go in that, um, that needed, needed some, some life and some revigoration and some restoration and some work done and and we've been able to go into those places um, and see God do amazing work through his people and through the power of his Holy Spirit as people got saved, brought out of addiction, families restored, um, and then actually buildings and institutions revived and restored. And so we've, we've seen that. And so if you're new to us uh, here at the fort, um, we got our name because we started in Fort Mitchell. And God's brought us on this journey, all these different places that really is, other people would look back and go, that's crazy. Y'all moved that many times in six years. And, and for me, I just look back and I go, look at what God has done. Look at what God has used this group of people to do over the course of, of these years to go into to places that, um, that we thought were no longer places of hope or ministry um, in a community and, uh, and then um, come in and to be a part of that, or in this case, come in and to partner alongside of a, a group of people um, here in this place to continue the ministry in this place. And so it's an exciting mission that God's given us, revive and restore. And, uh, and so as we as we fulfill or as we live out that mission, there's certain things that we want to remind ourselves of over and over again, um, core values or principles. And today, the one we want to focus on is service. And in that revive and restore mission, service is key. Service is crucial that we would always be not about ourselves, but about others. That we would always be not about what we can get out of it as individuals or as a church, but what we can contribute how we can help others as husbands and wives, not what I get out of it, but what I can give to my spouse. We believe that when we serve, that our lives are better because of it, that our lives are more full when we give ourselves away. I really believe that. Our lives are more full when we give ourselves away. You've experienced that truth in your life. Jesus said that it's better to give than it is to receive. You've experienced, that's a truth that God's just written on the universe. It is absolutely true. And not everybody lives like that and we get selfish and we want for ourselves. But you know that you are more blessed, you are more happy, more fulfilled when you are not just focused in on yourself and what you want. Because all that leads to is pursuit of more stuff that continues to, to uh, not fill the gaps there, to not meet your needs. And do you want more and want more and there's no peace in that? Or you get so focused in and you go, woe is me, and, and you, you suffer depression because of it. But when we turn our lives outward and we go towards others to lift them up, to raise them up, to meet their needs, it really does bring joy in our life. You've experienced that as you've served others. I hope you experienced that as you served your children, if you have children in here. And you experienced how as, you, as they came into your life, you didn't think you could love like that. But all of a sudden, now you, you see this child and you go, boy, I didn't know my heart could be this big. I didn't know I could have this much affection. I didn't know that I would want to, maybe not want to, but that I would, you know, clean these kind of messes, wipe these ugly noses that I would clean up, throw up in the middle of the night and not want to kick this person out of my house, right? It's just, you transform, you become different, right? And, uh, and it, is, it is amazing how serving, even though it looks humble, even though it might look gross at times, it makes our life more full. You step back and you go, thank you, God, for that opportunity. Thank you, God. And so that's what we want to grow in. That's what we want to grow in is that we would always, always be looking in Philippians chapter two that I, I uh, mentioned a minute ago. It says that um, have the mind of Christ to consider others' needs more important or better than yourself. And so that's what we want to be doing. We want to ask God to transform our hearts and our minds in that way. This morning I want to point to the example of Jesus in a story um, from the book of John, and uh, it is this beautiful story of how Jesus models service um, for his closest followers, that small group of, of disciples. He's sharing a meal with them, 
Um, and they are in this room together. So it's the, it's the 13 of them, the 12 followers and Jesus. And they're sharing a special meal. It's called a Passover meal. And it's a Jewish celebration that they would eat every year together. And it, it, uh, it um, celebrates what happened thousands of years before where God brought his people out of slavery. They were in slavery for hundreds of years in Egypt when God had promised before that they would be his promised people, his promised nation. They would live in this place and be a, a nation that would affect the, uh, the whole world. The whole world would be blessed through them. But then they're 100 years in slavery in Egypt. And so... So God goes in and continues to fulfill his promise. He brings his people out of slavery and takes them to the promised land. And uh, all that is pointing forward to Jesus and how Jesus brings us out of slavery and into the promised land. Um, but so that meal is, uh, goes back and it celebrates that bringing out. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. So they're having that meal together. They're celebrating that meal together. And um, on this night, um, the Bible tells us that... Um, this is the, the last time he'll have this supper with them because in just a few hours, he'll be arrested. One of the disciples, one of the followers, Judas, um, uh, had conspired with the religious leaders who were wanting to do away with Jesus. They were, he had been challenging um, their power by uh, the way the people had followed him and, and were excited about him. Thousands of people wanted to gather around Jesus. And so they couldn't arrest him during the daytime. There'd be riots. And so Judas conspired to show them where he would be at night in the dark. And so that night Judas would betray him and he would be arrested. But before that, they're in the room and they're having this meal. And during, sometime during the meal, Jesus gets up and he takes off his, his outer garment, the Bible says, and he wraps a towel around his waist and he gets down on his hands and knees and he takes a basin of water and he begins to wash his followers, his disciples' feet. And we, everybody in here could identify and say, that is, that's humble, that's service, right? Um, but now you, you have to add in the extra weight of this relationship that he has with these followers. These are his students. These are his disciples. He is the teacher. He is the master. This relationship, he is, he's up here, right? We know he's God in the flesh, right? We know he's up here for sure. But in this relationship, this earthly relationship, he's, he's up here. They would serve him. He wouldn't serve them. And, and for him to, to get down and, and to dress himself like a slave, like a servant and get down and to wash their feet is way out of place, way out of line. And you would probably feel like it was way out of line if Jesus was here today and he offered to wash your feet, right? I would feel like, no, no, no. <laughs> I need to wash your feet, Jesus. In fact, in the story, uh, thankful we have Peter there. Peter is one of the followers of Jesus and oftentimes he's the one who gets to speak as we read through um, those first four books of the, of the New Testament and he speaks and, and I'm thankful for that because a lot of times he says what it is, you know, the question we're asking or the thing we're thinking. And when Jesus gets around to Peter to wash Peter's feet, Peter goes, you wash my feet? Uh-uh. he feels unworthy, right? He says, this is, this is his teacher. This is his Lord. This is, I left everything to come and to follow you, Jesus. I'm, let me serve you. And Jesus says, if I don't wash your feet, if I don't serve you, you have no part with me. And Peter goes, well, wash it all. Do my head, do my hands. Let's do it all. And Jesus goes, your feet are enough. And... Um, and he models this service. He gets down there and he does this lowly thing for his disciples. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the ultimate show of service because, in fact, in just a few hours, he would be arrested. He'd be beaten. He'd be stripped. He'd be spat upon and cursed, betrayed, hung on a cross to die. All the shame that goes with that, all the pain that goes with that. And... He goes willingly. He goes, even though he's cursed, he doesn't curse back. He goes willingly. All of that to demonstrate service. He says to his disciples there in that room in John chapter 13, verse 12, he says, uh, when, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? 
You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. I'm going to read that one more time. For I've given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Jesus models service, and just so they know, he says, now that I, your teacher, I, your master, you saw how, to, he's telling them, you saw how out of place this was. You know I shouldn't have been down there on my head, but I did it for you. To show you that that's what you should do for one another. Now do it. Now serve one another. Now there's certain people that believe that, that means we ought to actually wash people's feet. Maybe, maybe we should, but... But here is this, for me, it is this picture of this very low thing that Jesus could do. We get this picture of him stooping down, looking like a servant, looking like a slave, washing his disciples' feet. This, this wonderful picture, this wonderful symbol of the, the one who is worthy, one who is worthy of worship, getting down and doing something that is low, very low, something you would say, He's too important to do that. He's, especially for those people, right? He's too important. His position is too high. That's exactly what Jesus is showing us. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your background or your experience or your education or how much you got or how good looking you are or whatever it is, how smart you are. Everybody. And look at the lowest of the low and say, I am not too good to serve. If my master, my master says he can get down there in that low position and serve, then I am not too good to get down there and serve. And he promises me, he tells me that my life will be more full if I do it, that I'll be more blessed to give than to receive. So that's the example we want to follow. Now, the, the tough part for us is we do look around and we think there are some things that I am, I may not tell anybody, but I feel like I'm too good for, right? I talked about this in the first service. You know, we talk about service and one of the things that, you know, we like to do in Revive and Restore is we like to work on buildings around here, right? And so the men love to come and tear some stuff down and rebuild it and, uh, and they love to serve in that way. And, uh, you know, they like it. They enjoy it. And so that's almost cheating. So in my book, you don't really get to count it. If you enjoyed it that much, you don't get to count it, right? It's the stuff where you got to get up and, you know, clean the puke up in the middle of the night. You know, that's, that's the stuff right there. Like a, like a man who loves to swing a hammer and build stuff like that he would, he would go and chase the toddlers around over in kids' ministry, you know? Um, no one is too good. You know, we were, um, we were cleaning up some, some area, uh, and um, it was, so we use it for ministry, and this area had been, it was just gotten in really, really bad shape. Um, and uh, um, some people had been in the, you know, been in the, living there and just had really abused the place and there was garbage everywhere and it was to the point that there were bugs crawling everywhere and you just walked in to this place and, and you just, you know, it just hit you, like it smacked you right in the face. And there was just soiled stuff everywhere and it was just awful, awful. And, um, but we know we needed to, well, you know, we to clean the place up and so, Took the, took the staff over there, and you could be proud of your staff. They're, they're really good. Um, took them over there, and they got the rubber gloves on and the masks on and started to, to clean the place out. And, um, and it was really, it was, for me, it was really funny because here you go. You got Garrett, right, 
who, you know, just incredibly talented, right? You talk about somebody who'd be wasted cleaning up trash, right? He needs to be with his guitar somewhere. It was so funny because we'd go in there and come out with a load of stuff and he'd run out in the parking lot. It was bad, it was bad. But, but here is, here my thing, and Garrett's gonna be mad that I even you know, made an example of him like that because he is, he is so humble. It would never have crossed his mind that he was too good to do that. That his hands were too important to clean up the filth. <laughs> would never have crossed his mind. Maybe. But he didn't act that way. Um, and neither did the rest of the staff. I was really proud of him. Um, but look, you, you've, you've done those kind of things before. But the, I'm, not talking, I'm not trying to brag on anybody this morning. What I want is I want to be reminded all the time as I go through my day, uh, every day, to be looking for those opportunities to serve. That, I'm, that there's nobody I walk by, there's nobody I interact with, that, or no situation that's too low for me to get involved in, right? Like my time is too important for, for this person, right? Or my money shouldn't be wasted on this person and their knee because they're going to go right back to the same thing again, right? Um, a couple of things that I want to talk about as we, as we think about service. First of all, you always have a greater capacity to serve than you think you do. There are limitations. Money and physical resources are limited, all right? At some point, they run out. Time is limited, for sure. But I just, I want always to be honest about those things. I want God to help me to be honest in evaluating those things because many times I feel like, yes, time is limited, but the thing that I, I think is more important, is it really? You know, the thing that I'm on my way to do, is it really more important? As you watch Jesus on his way, you know, stopping and, and ministering to the, the woman, you know, who'd been sick for years and years, he's on his way to, to an important person's house to go and see about her daughter, and, and he stops, and he, you know, I just think, on my way to do what I think is important, am I, am I putting myself as bigger, as more important, am I not stopping and, and seeing the needs around me? Um, so I think there's always, there's not always more time, there's not always more money, but maybe there's more capacity for us emotionally to care. Maybe there is a little more time than we thought there wasn't. Maybe there is a little more money than we thought there wasn't to, to help someone, to serve someone. Um, but just as we go, as we begin to have and ask for the mind of service and begin to look at people and and see them and their needs as greater than our own, the hope is that we would begin to change our behaviors, even just in little things. You could just start and ask God, help me in little things to increase my capacity. Like, you know, just in parking lots. Like, you know, dude, I'm, all right, now it's a challenge. That car's coming this way, I'm coming this way. Parking spots over here. I'm gonna get in there before then, right? You know, so I can park a couple spots closer. Let them have it. Let them go through the door first. Hey, when we come in here, you know, somebody comes in, looks like they're looking for a seat. Just don't make them walk over you, you know? It's little stuff, right? That's, that's little nothing stuff. But what I want to do for me and for all of us is to just begin to think of others before we think of ourselves, right? Just have eyes to see others and to see their needs. And you have a greater capacity to, to see those needs, to serve others than maybe you think you do right now. We talked about in the past, you know, you have this child, you have this baby, and you go, I didn't know I could love anything this much, you know, and then you have another one and you go, wow, it happened again, right? God just grows you in your capacity, and that's true. It's true about the people around you that you come in contact with around the world. Um, when we talk about serving, don't overcomplicate it. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Uh, 
in, in church ministry, there's all kinds of ways that we can serve one another. And one of the, one of the great things that we, it's all necessary for, for us to do a good job to, to minister to people and to welcome people in. And, that, you know, so we want to have great kids ministry and we want to have people um, to be um, hosts and hostesses and to serve coffee and to be at all the doors and all the places you can get lost to help people get to where they need to go. And so all these things are really important. And um, when we think about, you know, working in the parking lot, helping people get part of all these things, uh, leading small groups, hosting a small group. All these things that I mentioned, none of them are like super complicated. I mean, like even leading a small group, people are like, oh, I can't teach a small group. There's no teaching. You just have people to your house. You ask the six questions that, that I give you to ask, and you just talk about it, and you get somebody to bring some food. It's not, there's nothing difficult to it. And so when, when we talk about things, Brittany said, we always need volunteers. That's true. We always need volunteers, always need and kids, always need and greeters, always need and parking. You know, and so you know, the thing I've always thought was crazy in ministry, and, and maybe this is me not being spiritual enough as your pastor, but um, you'd ask somebody to do something like, you know, the parking lot, you know, work in the parking lot, help people get in the parking lot and make sure people don't run into each other and that kind of stuff and get them, greeting them. And, you know, jobs like that. And people go, well, let me pray about it. I'm like, I don't want to appear too unspiritual here because I am the pastor. And I believe we should be in prayer for all things, right? Um, but... You know, it's just helping park cars. <laughs> so we need, we need the help. You could do it. So either you want to do it or not. You may even want to. You will or not. Um, so, look, I don't, like I said, I don't want to be too unspiritual, but if there's a need and you can meet the need, why not? If there's something that you can do, there's a need in front of you and you can meet that need, then why not? When you walk by, you know, wherever you are and there's garbage on the ground and you go, well, that's not my job to pick up the garbage. Well, who cares, right? Garbage has got to get picked up by somebody. So why walk over it? And you think, all the time? Like, at work? clean up somebody else's mess at work. They don't deserve to get away with, that, that needs to sit there and rot so everybody knows that that sorry person left their old Chinese food and whatever. But no. And what if nobody knows you did it? That would be awful, right? Like if you cleaned up the mess and nobody knew you did it, that would be terrible. I'm just cleaning up over here. I'm just... Don't overcomplicate it. Need helping kids? You got a kid, especially if you got a kid, but even if you don't and you're, you know, your rest record is pretty, pretty clean. Um, it's a no-brainer, right? You know? Um, if there's a need, you can meet the need, meet the need. Finally, I'd say, um, finally, when you do serve, serve like you're serving Jesus. Um, Jesus actually tells us to think that way. He, he says that, he, he tells a parable that the end of, of all things and when God is, is separating the sheep from the goats, the good from the bad at the end. And he says, he says you sheep, you good people, you, you the ones that did it right. He said, when I, was, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was in prison, you came to visit me. And, and they said, and he says, come enter my rest. Come into heaven, enter my rest. And, and he says, the people say, when did we see you? When did we see you hungry and feed you? When did we see you thirsty and give you something to drink? When, when, when? And Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of these, and he had just been talking about kids a moment ago. He said, whatever you did for the least of these little ones, you did for me. And so what I would encourage you as you go about seeing people or, or saying yes to, as God begins to show you needs in people's lives around you, that you would begin to see when you say yes to serve them, that I am not serving just them, but I'm also serving my Lord Jesus. I'm doing it as I would serve him. And so I won't begrudge it. 
Like I won't, I won't help this person all the while grumbling along the way and going, they should get their life together. But I would love them. See, that's, that's the thing. You steal the joy out of them. You know, it's supposed to be more blessed to give than receive. And, and if you give and you just, and just insist on grumbling about it the whole way, you, you lose your joy, right? So just throw yourself into it. Serving Jesus here. Serving my Lord. I want him to always be changing our hearts and changing our minds in these things so that, so that we would be a people known for service. No one wants to be known for being selfish. We just don't always think about it. And so we have to remind ourselves, we have to ask God, help us to think about others before ourselves. And that's our prayer this morning. God, would you do that? Would you help us? Would you transform our minds? Would you help us to see that we're not better? <laughs> There's no job below us, right? That everyone we come in contact with is an opportunity to serve our Lord Jesus. And he'll begin to change us and help us to see, have his eyes. Um, this morning, we're going to have the Lord's Supper together. And I told you in that meal where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, they were, they were celebrating the Passover meal. And this is a meal that, uh, that commemorated something that happened thousands of years ago where God brought his people out of slavery. And it was a special meal he told them to have. He said that you should have lamb at this meal and uh, have unleavened bread and, uh, and gave them very specific instructions. And he said, now take some of the blood from the lamb because they didn't go to the grocery store to get it. It was a lamb and they made kebabs out of it. All right. And they had to do it themselves. And so he said, take some of the blood and put it over the door frame of your house. And God is about to send a curse over the, the land of Egypt. One final thing to, to convince Pharaoh to let his people out of slavery. The angel of death is going to come over and every firstborn in the land of Egypt is going to die. Except for those with the blood over the door frames of their house. So that's the meal that they're celebrating. But Jesus does something this time. He changes the meaning of the elements. And so when he takes the bread, he breaks the bread and he says, from now on, when you eat this meal, when you eat this bread, remember that I gave my body for you. Remember that I gave my body for you. And so now as they celebrate this meal, it's not some lamb that was killed for them. It is Jesus. He said, as he, rose the cup, as he raised the cup up to him, he said, he said, now when you drink this cup, look at it. Look, it's red. It looks like blood. He, says, he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, the new promise. It's poured out for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink this cup, remember, remember. So now for us today, when we come and we, we take the Lord's Supper, or you may have called it communion, when we have this time together, it's just a little cracker. It's a little cup of grape juice. So what we have to do is we have to ask God, stir up the affections of our heart, God. This is an incredibly important symbol. When we take this little cracker and this little juice, it represents the body and the blood of Jesus Christ given on a cross and poured out for the forgiveness of sins. And today, as we take it, we remember that something real happened for us. Not just some example, but God in the flesh gave himself for us on a cross. He rose again so that we could know that he has power over sin and death. And so we ask him, God, make these symbols big for us today. I've told you before when we've had the Lord's Supper that it was a retreat I went on and we served the Lord's Supper several times during this thing and I was one of the ministers and they came up to, to receive uh, the Lord's Supper. Um, the guy would hold his hands out and, and put the bread in his hand and, um, and I would say, the body of Christ given for you or the blood of Christ poured out for you and he would always go, I remember, I remember. 
And I thought that was so good. I thought that was so good for us to, in this moment, this is what this is about, that we would remember something real happened for us. Something real happened for us. And so I'm gonna pray in just a moment. As I'm praying, the band's gonna come up. Um, and we're gonna come and we're gonna, we're gonna have this meal together as it is. And what I wanna ask you to do, just some instructions. I wanna ask you to everybody, you're gonna go row by row, going backwards, you're gonna come out to the left, you're gonna come around and you'll be served here, here and here, depending on your section. If you're in, up top, you'll be served over on that side. You come out to the left, you come out and be served and you go right back in that way, okay? Just make a circle. There's a trash can at the end of the rows there that you can put your cup in. Um, and uh, I think that's the instructions. So let's pray and ask God to bless this time. Father, in these moments, we ask that you do something special for us, that you make these symbols um, big, big for us, that we would feel the weight of them, that something real has been done for us, that your body, your blood poured out for us so that we could be forgiven. You served. You served us even to the point of death. Thank you. This morning we remember. We remember. God, I would ask this morning that if there's someone in here who feels like they feel like Peter today, they feel like they are unworthy to have you serve them. They feel like you're un, they're unworthy to have you die for them because of what they've done in the past. I pray that this, this morning, today, you would show them that none of their sin is too big. That, God, you can heal it all. God, I pray that you show them this morning, you give them faith to say yes to you, to come to you in faith, to call on you for salvation. Help them, Father, as we remember today. Bless this bread, bless this cup, bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you were ministered to by the message today. To keep up with all things that God is doing through the Fort Church, visit our website at fortchurch.org or follow us on Facebook. You can also contribute to this ministry by giving online at fortchurch.org slash give.